Last time I looked at the trusty sidearms in the form of the dual SAAs from Umarex. Well, today it's time to check out the new Rio Bravo underlever. <laughs> And welcome to AAR on Air. Well, sometimes your trusty sidearm just ain't gonna cut it. So it's time to bring out the underlever. Big John style. Oh yes. I do actually own a Winchester type replica and I love it. I even had a friend of mine, Dan, do all the artwork for the case and I love that as well. But sadly, it isn't the shell ejecting version and it isn't the Big John swing to cock and load version. This one, however, is both. The Umarex Legends Cowboy Rifle Rio Bravo. Now, I have reviewed the Umarex Legends Cowboy Rifle before, and I love them. Again, it's not a pest control tool, it's fun. And with this Rio Bravo, it's also the challenge to see if you can cock it in true Big John style. And yes, I know it was done before John Wayne did it, and it was really made famous in true grit rather than Rio Bravo. But what the heck, it's Hollywood. Now, before you try the single-handed cocking move, make sure your arms are long enough and prepare yourself for a few bruises when you get it wrong to start with. Let's take a closer look at this version, shall we? It is 966 millimeters long and tips the scales at around two and a half kilograms. But what is that in true cowboy speak? Well, just over 38 inches long and just over five and a half pounds in weight. There is a front open sight, which is fixed and has a brass tip to it, making it more visible and yet still in character. This will be responsible for those initial bruises when practicing the cocking swing. It has the twin tube design, the top being the barrel and the bottom is for the 10 rounds of ammo. Well, BB shell casings. The original underlever had a 15 round capacity, but this is the shorter barrel assembly and just has the 10. But Umarex have decided to include a further 10 spare shells to keep the fun going. It's also a good idea because you do get carried away and you're likely to lose one or two if you're not very careful. You may also need to put some on your gun belt too. The rear sight is adjustable and again is an open design. The metalwork is antique, coloured and distressed. The woodwork on this is actually faux wood, but they have done a really good job on these things. The whole thing has been distressed, as I say, to give it an authentic used feel, which I really like. Each one is numbered out of 1200 which is the limited edition run. I realise 1200 isn't super exclusive, but to the amount Umarex would normally sell, that is a pretty low number for them to use in a special. I love the oversized loop on these, which gives you the ability to try that single-handed cocking action. If you try it with a standard item, you will regret it, as your fingers will all get knotted up, squashed and probably bruised or even broken. Be warned though, there is a reason why cowboys wore gloves. It was really true grit that John Wayne was more famous for when using the spin technique, but he did have the oversized loop in the Rio Bravo film. It was done way before that. I can't remember the guy's name. Somebody's going to leave the comments down. There's loads of it on YouTube uh, who used it first. A well-known guy but and film star. But John Wayne sort of made it more popular with True Grit. It is that way. 
Oh. Whatever you do, don't try and do it with the longer version. It doesn't work. There is a safety behind the hammer to lock everything up. You need to pull it back for fire and slide forward for that safe with the white and red indicator completely visible. The trigger is not what you would call match grade, but again, it wasn't on the originals and is balanced about right so you don't accidentally fire this if you are spinning it around. To load the shells, firstly, load them up with ammo in the rear. Again, this is designed for BBs rather than pellets and as such doesn't have a rifle barrel, but it will be using both BBs and pellets to test the power and accuracy a little later on. Once you have your shells all pre-loaded up, then slide them into the right hand side until all 10 are on board. It is worth mentioning at this point that these are interchangeable with your SAA revolvers. No bad thing. So you'll have loads of shells for either of the revolvers or the rifle. And before anyone asks, they're not likely to fit any other brand of guns. They all seem to have their own slight shape differences or size to their shells to suit their own brand of guns. The CO2 will also need loading up and this takes two 12 gram, uh, 12 gram CO2s back to back. Firstly, remove the butt plate by pressing in and rotating through 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Then pull it off. There is a hex key built into the butt plate. Use this to unscrew the retainer in the bottom and when removed, it's got quite a long thread on it, There we go. Drop in your first face forward, your second bottom to bottom, and then slot it back into place, tighten it up until you just get that slight hiss. Then return the butt pad and lock back into place by rotating 90 degrees clockwise. You're now loaded up and ready. Let's get this over the chronograph, shall we? And see what power it's actually putting out. Now, remember, this isn't a hunting tool. It's a fun replica, so I'm not expecting big numbers at all. With standard steel BBs on board at 5.37 grains, it saw 621 feet per second, which is 4.6 foot-pounds or 6.24 joules. Let's drop some heavier 8.44 grain lead pellets in then, shall we, for good measure. Well, it saw 535 feet per second, which is 5.37 foot-pounds or 7.27 joules. This is about what I thought it was going to be. This was also conducted on a cold, wet March day in the UK. So it will be more powerful in summer or a typical day in California, maybe. <laughs> oh, I wish. Like I said, not enough to use as some kind of hunting tool, but more than enough to have some target plinking fun. Let's get this out on the range, shall we? Twenty meters ought to do it. The Rio Bravo. Let's give it a go, shall we? It is a beautiful thing. Now, let's start by doing the pellets versus the BBs. First thing I'm doing, I'm going to load up just half a dozen cartridges loaded up with BBs. It's quite a distance down there, to be honest. Yeah, that one's ready. Let's give it a go out at 20 metres. Open sight. This is the first time I've shot this, so I've no idea what it's going to be like, but we'll give it a go. 
That is little. I don't know what I'm going to be able to see at all. Gosh. Well, I hit the plate. I am not sure where at all. I can't see it. I'm not doing this right, am I? I should be doing it like that. It's a big ask down there. Nah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Let's try it with some pellets now, shall we? Safety works. I can't see a thing. I think this is the last one. Another one. That's the last one. Let's go and have a look because to be honest it is a real struggle with those open sites. Right, so here we go. And what I'm trying to do is get close enough in if we possibly can, because there is the BB version. There is the pellet version. They're both down at about 20, 25 meters, to be honest. It's quite a way for open sites, especially for me. But neither of them are pellet on pellet. You don't expect that from open site shooting. And with a bit of practice, because that's the first time I've shot them, I think you could actually group it better, especially if you've got better eyesight than I have. I really think they're great fun. There isn't a huge amount of difference between the BB or the pellet as far as target work is concerned. They'll get closer if you knew what you were doing, but that's probably down to the fact that the barrel isn't rifled, so the pellet isn't gaining any advantage. The only thing that you are gaining advantage from is knowing that you're not going to be any worse off using pellets as far as accuracy is concerned, but what you are doing is stopping any potential ricochets. You've not got steel everywhere. Now, to me, that's a win, and I would use the Econ Excites, probably, because they're about half the price of a normal set of pellets. They're H&N anyway. It's a bit of a no-brainer. They're almost as cheap as having... BBs. So, is it good fun? Yes, it's amazing fun. And you finish up with your brass, as they say, all over the deck. Pick it up, give it a clean, make sure it's all right, and to prolong the life of your gun as well. These things are really good fun, and it's even better if you take the safety off so it proves it works. Really, really good fun. Loading in from the side, amazing. And of course, there's only 1,200 of these things as well. Yeah, I, I don't think you can knock it. And of course, I'm a bit of a Big John closet fan as well. So yeah, to me, it means an awful lot. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. The sun's coming out as well. So back to the studio. Thank you very much. Of course, it's the tin cans that should be really worried. This is a load of fun. I can keep doing that all day, I've run out. It's a load of fun and so realistic with those ejecting shells. Yes, you can reuse them, but 
just check them to make sure they're clean and undamaged before you do. You should get around 60 shots from a couple of decent CO2s on a warm day. Don't forget, temperature does affect these things. If it's cold, keep your spare CO2s in your trouser pocket to keep them warm. And everyone else guessing. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I do like these and I also think it complements the twin revolvers nicely. Right, price. Well, this limited edition is around £430 UK, including the extra shells. Again, remember, these are in limited numbers and even though they are classed as BB rifles, you can use pellets which are less likely to ricochet and of course there is more choice on the weight of pellets and shapes. The joy of all of these guns on test today is the feel and the action. The hammer on the revolvers, the ejecting shells on the rifle and of course the Saturday afternoon matinee feeling as a child. I really enjoyed these. I would urge you to have a feel of these the next time you're in your local shop. But be warned, you may finish up with more than just another gun in your collection. Please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the alarm bell, check out the AAO website and all this little lot. Don't forget to visit the guys at Airgun Factory. A big thank you to the guys at Umarex and Vector Air for getting these to me to review for you guys. Most importantly, the biggest thanks, as always, goes out to you for watching and supporting the channel. Thank you for putting up with my little bit of fun today. Please stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully I'll see you all next week. Bye for now, y'all. <laughs>